Story 1. When I was 23, now 28, I was engaged to Ryan, who was 32, now 37. Our engagement ended when my stepsister Kelly, who was 24, now 29, begged me to leave him because they loved each other, but Ryan was too afraid to break up with me because he didn't want to hurt me or my family. When I confronted Ryan about it, he denied it, saying she had been trying to come on to him for some time and that he never mentioned it because he didn't want to ruin our relationship. He begged me not to believe her, so we continued as we were. Kelly grew resentful and made nasty comments about how I was forcing a man who didn't even love me to marry me because I had low self-esteem. A month later, she sent me a video of them having sex in my bed and multiple screenshots of him telling her he loved her, how he wished she was the girl he was marrying, and how he hated that I wouldn't let them be together. I was devastated and angry, but my best friend convinced me not to go nuclear on them and instead to quietly move out when Ryan was at work the next week. So that's what I did. I contacted my dad and my stepmom and asked them if I could move in temporarily. I removed the money I had contributed to our joint account for wedding expenses and transferred the rest to him before closing the account. Once I got settled in, I sent all the screenshots she had sent me to all our relatives and his. Ryan tried to get back together with me multiple times, but I ended up blocking him when I found out he had proposed to her with the same ring he gave me, I had left it behind. Now, Kelly is my stepsister from my mom's side. I have another stepsister, 36, and stepbrother, 38, from my mom's second marriage and a half-sister, 26. They all went to the wedding. Whenever I tried to express that I was hurt by the fact they were just supporting Kelly and Ryan as though what they did to me meant nothing, they would shrug it off and say they couldn't cut them out completely because they were family. I haven't spent a single holiday with my mom's side since, and neither have my older biological brother or sister. I only see my mom and half-sister when I invite them over to my place, as Kelly and Ryan moved in with my mom and stepdad a year after they got married. Our relationship is very rocky, but I've grown closer to my dad, stepmom, and their children, an older stepbrother and two younger half-siblings, who have all been very supportive since this happened, so it hasn't all been bad. On New Year's Day, my boyfriend, now husband, proposed to me. We had a small engagement party which I invited my mom and half-sister to. They never turned up because I was excluding half of our family. I never invited my stepdad or step-siblings because they were pretty hurtful when it came out that Kelly and Ryan were sleeping together. They claimed it wasn't their fault I got in the way of true love and made me out to be some sort of vindictive Disney villain for being angry with them. We were planning to have our wedding ceremony this summer, but in late February, my husband suggested we postpone until next year because he was concerned COVID would get worse and we would have to cancel or reschedule anyway. I ended up finding out I was pregnant a month before our original wedding date, so we had a courthouse wedding on that date with the plan to hold the ceremony next year. Only my dad's side of the family was aware of both the pregnancy and the wedding. My stepmom likes to knit, so she's been making some stuff for the baby. Recently, she posted about the things she had made on Facebook with a caption talking about how excited she was to have another grandchild soon. I was tagged in the post. I have zero issues with the post. I never told my family I wasn't going to inform my mom's side, it wasn't that I intentionally hid it from her, she just never seemed very interested in my life or relationship, so I never brought it up. My mom called me an hour later to demand to know if I was pregnant and how she couldn't believe I hadn't told her she was finally going to be a grandmother. She has since invited me and my husband over to her house multiple times, and I've declined every single time for the obvious reason. My stepdad, who I've barely spoken to in five years, has reached out to tell me how excited he is to meet the baby and my husband, and the same with my siblings. Even Kelly reached out to my husband to congratulate us. I was furious. The next time my mom and stepdad called me, I finally laid into them. I told them I didn't want them to keep inviting me over when they knew I would be forced to see Kelly and Ryan if I came. I told them how hurt and angry I still am over what they did to me and how my family dismissed my feelings. I told them how they wouldn't throw Kelly and Ryan away, but they were so quick to leave me out to rot while I was going through the worst betrayal I'd ever experienced in my life. I told them I wasn't even sure I wanted people like them in my child's life. 
my mom was crying hysterically and kept saying I was being cruel and that I couldn't deprive her of her first grandchild. The thing is, my baby isn't her first grandchild. My sister has two adopted daughters already who my mom doesn't even try to bond with. She kept wailing about how I might be the only person in our family to even give her grandchildren. My stepsisters are both having a hard time getting or staying pregnant and my half-sister has proclaimed herself to be child-free. My stepdad got angry and defensive. He claimed I was petty for holding on to something that happened five years ago. He pointed out how I had found someone else, so I should understand how love works and sometimes two people just can't help themselves. You love who you love, basically. He said Kelly and Ryan were happy together, so I should be happy for them the way they're happy for me and my husband. The ironic thing is my sister told me Kelly and Ryan looked like they were on the verge of divorce and they argue constantly, my mom complains to her about them, and how my siblings all hate him but pretend they like him for Kelly's sake. I ended up hanging up because I was so angry, and when I get angry, I start crying. I didn't want them to think they got to me. Since then, I've been receiving texts and calls non-stop from my mom's family. They're all essentially telling me I should be over things already. It's gotten to the point where my husband and I have switched phones so he can screen my messages for me, and I don't have to read them. TLDR, my stepsister slept with my ex-fiancé and married him. I'm now happily married to someone else, and we're expecting our first child together. My family thinks I should be over it already since I've moved on, but the anger is still there, and I have no interest in forming a relationship with my ex or my stepsister again. They're now putting pressure on me to try to get me to forget it ever happened. How do I make my family understand just how unforgivable what Kelly and Ryan have done to me is? I would prefer not to go completely no contact, but is that my only option here? Story 2 My brother is getting married to my ex and invited me to the wedding. I, 39M, have been a caretaker for my brother, Justin, 33M, since he was 10. I was only 16 when our parents died, and I had to take care of the household because Justin was still very young. I did everything for him, and he was the apple of my eye. I guess I spoiled him a lot. I never dated much because I was the breadwinner for my brother, until I met Melissa, 35F, almost 10 years ago. We dated for two years, and it was great, my brother loved her. One day, I overheard a conversation she was having with a friend. Melissa said she loves me and appreciates that I take care of her in every way, but that I am pretty average in bed. Her friend asked if she was going to talk to me about it or how she was happy. Melissa then revealed that her fix was my brother. She explained how she and Justin had been having an affair for eight months because she thought he was better in bed than I was. You can imagine how painful it was for me. I pretended I didn't hear a thing and confronted Justin about it. He initially denied it but eventually broke down and admitted it was true. He said he didn't want to hurt me and that he and Melissa were in love and wanted to get married, but Melissa wouldn't leave me. I was furious and told him he was dead to me before leaving. I also kicked out Melissa, who then stayed with Justin and his roommates. Justin was banging on my door nonstop, so I had to move in with a friend and told everyone not to disclose my location to him. His calls and emails were all the same, apologizing and saying he would break up with her, but I stopped the bank account, like a trust fund, that I had made for him for when he turned 25. He was no longer my brother. Aftermath I went into a deep depression, not eating or sleeping properly. I would have nightmares of my brother and ex laughing at me about my inadequacies. It got so bad that I stood in front of a train track because it was unbearable. Luckily, my friends saved me. I stayed with them for a year, went to therapy, and did group sessions. I had a lot of anxiety about intimacy, so I didn't date for a long time. My friends encouraged me to try, and I did, but it went badly. I still go to therapy to this day. However, other aspects of my life have improved. I focused on building new relationships, traveling, and exploring new hobbies. I was living for myself. I am now in a relationship with someone I've been with for three years. We are engaged and expecting a child. Wendy, 32F, is a really nice person who knows all about my insecurities and problems. 
she has been mature and patient with me, and I was able to trust her enough to be in a relationship. The incident. Two days ago, I received an invitation to my brother's wedding to Melissa. Looking at their names doesn't hurt as much now, but I still feel numb. My fiancé suggests we shouldn't go and delete the invite. Relevant comments. Scrumptious nutsack. I wouldn't have been as strong as you, man. I'm in shock and inner rage at the heartless people who hurt you. I could never imagine how horrible this must have made you feel. OOP replied. There is nothing more I want than to watch them suffer. I have no love or blessing left for him. When my parents died, they told me to look after him, and then, when we were adults, we would look after each other. He threw it all away. It doesn't hurt that Melissa cheated, it hurts more that my own brother betrayed me. Update, July 5, 2023 I was planning to update sooner, but I delayed it because I now have a baby girl. My fiancé was 8.5 months pregnant when I posted, and we had an early delivery. My baby girl, Emily, is a joy. She is tiny and cute, and she has eyes just like mine. I cannot believe we made something so precious. I spend as much time as I can holding her. My wife gets annoyed because she thinks I will coddle her to death. We also got married quickly in a court ceremony, as neither of us wanted a big wedding. We are all fine. A few days ago, I received another email from my brother. I had forgotten to block him. My brother wrote a long email, apologizing and acknowledging his mistakes. He said he knew he shouldn't have slept with Melissa but did it anyway because he felt jealous of me. He said he wanted to stop but didn't. The day I disowned him, he had a panic attack and tried to contact me, but my friends refused to give up my location. He and Melissa split up for a while. He hit rock bottom when he heard from a friend that I had tried to commit suicide. His friends also judged him harshly, and his friends saw me as a big brother, so they refused to attend his wedding. He and Melissa reconciled two years ago after she became a single mom. They rekindled their romance, but he called off the wedding after realizing I wouldn't attend. He broke up with Melissa again and is willing to do anything to reconcile with me, even if it takes his whole life. I deleted the email. My therapist said that forgiveness isn't forced, it comes when we can genuinely forgive someone. I honestly don't want to. I know I am being petty and cruel, but I am happy with my life now. Adding in will cause stress. My wife told me to forget it. My brother is not genuinely guilty. As soon as I forgive him, he would go back to Melissa. He needs to figure out his life on his own. I have babied him enough, now it is his turn to be an adult. Edit. Some people asked if my brother's life was in order, so I want to clarify. I do not know what he has been doing. I moved further away and transferred jobs. He must have known my place of work to get my email. For ten years. I pretended he didn't exist and focused on therapy. I don't know what happened between him and Melissa, but from his email, it seems they broke up after dating for a few years. His friends were unhappy with him dating her and refused to attend the wedding. My brother said he doesn't want to get married unless I support him. Melissa came back, perhaps thinking I would accept her, but she knows better. I am stubborn when it comes to holding a grudge. I didn't realize I had such an impact on his friends. They were good people who hung out with us and treated me like their own brother. I did get apologies from two of his friends who never had positive male role models. I don't have any contact with them now. Relevant comments. Okay underscore pomegranate 2764. Well OP, your brother is facing the consequences of his actions. Every choice we make has a price, and he should have known that when he was meeting your ex behind your back. I don't blame you at all. Melissa got what she deserved. Her ex cheating on her is karma for sleeping with your brother. You've done so much for him, and if he truly regrets what he did, he will get back on his feet without asking for your help. I wonder how he had the audacity to invite you to the wedding with his now ex, knowing how much they hurt you. You were right for not attending. Forgiveness can't be forced. You will forgive him if and when you're ready. I don't judge you for not forgiving him. OOP replied. 
If he truly regretted it, he wouldn't have decided to marry Melissa, the woman who destroyed my life along with my brother. What did he think? That I would forget all the pain and trauma they caused me? Forgiveness doesn't set you free, it creates a different trap. Over the years, I have learned that forgiveness is a tool used by cowards who want to escape their wrongdoings without facing any consequences. They think forgiveness removes the toll of guilt. True forgiveness is never forced, it is earned. He still has done nothing to earn it. Thanks for watching. If you want more stories like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends.